property theory of romantic relationships. So this is within the theories of um, romantic relationship sections of the relationship part for paper three. So again, this is an economic, mo mo economic model of um, relationships, but it's more concerning the idea of fairness within a relationship. So social exchange theory was all about trying to get the most out of a relationship. This is saying that we want a relationship to be fair, and if we deem it to be unfair in any way, then it will cause dissatisfaction. So it says that we try to achieve fairness. So not necessarily equality in a relationship, but the idea that we are fair in our relationship. Now, any unfairness or inequity will lead to a person feeling distress. Now, it can exist because either you feel like you give a great deal in a relationship and you get a little in return. So you put a lot into the relationship and you're not getting very much back. In which sense you would feel the under benefited. So you might feel anger, sadness or resentment. But equally, you might feel that you receive a great deal from a relationship, but you give a little in return. So you get quite a lot out of the relationship, but you feel that you don't necessarily put as much into it. So therefore, you'd feel over benefited and you might experience feelings of pity, guilt or shame. So both of those can lead to inequitable relationships and dissatisfaction and distress within that relationship. So we are most comfortable in a relationship when we believe that we are getting roughly what we deserve. So i.e. we are getting out of a relationship an equal amount to what we are putting into a relationship. Now, the greater the inequity, so the greater the unfairness, the greater the dissatisfaction. Now, couples or individuals can try to deal with that inequity, that unfairness. So they can try to change their perceptions. So their perceptions of the rewards and costs. Um, so they can feel that they're more um, equal. So may maybe nothing actually changes, but maybe they go, oh, well, that person is really good at doing the cooking and that that's quite a big part of the relationship. So therefore, I am getting quite a big reward for that. So it doesn't necessarily matter that I might do most of the cleaning and the shopping and the housework. So they, they might change their perceptions of the reward and cost. So it feels like the relationship is equitable. Equally, the underbenefited partner may work hard to make sure the relationship is more equitable, provided that they think that it is possible to do so and the relationship can survive. Um, it will only they will only work harder if they feel that the work will restore the equity and it will mean that the relationship will progress and become more satisfied. So if we were to look at some AO1 style type questions, you've got a two marker here, which is briefly outline what is meant by equity in relation to theories of romantic relationships. So two marks, you have to make two sort of key distinct points. So you can make the, the point that it's an economic theory of relationships. You can talk along the lines of that it's the fairness within a relationship. So people will try to make sure that they get out of relationship in is in a similar level to what they put into a relationship and we feel most comfortable when we deem relationships to be um, fair and equitable so please remember that equity is fairness it isn't equality so it doesn't need to be completely fair within a rate um, equal within a relationship so i the division of chores doesn't need to be the same it's whether they are perceived to be fair within that relationship so in terms of AO3, then we have some porting evidence. So research found that couples um, do consider their relationships equitable if they um, and they were more satisfied um, than those that didn't think their relationships were as equitable. And those that saw themselves as over benefiting or under benefiting weren't as satisfied. So it supports the idea that equity does lead to um, a more satisfied relationship. However, if we were to look at the T for testability, now this is where we can have our counter argument for this supporting evidence. Now, just because it's an association doesn't mean that we can establish a cause and effect. Um, it could be that actually 
couples that are more satisfied will be more will try to make sure that there is fairness in a relationship that there is equity and they will try to put in as much in the relationship as they get out of the relationship whereas couples that aren't satisfied might not be as concerned about equity so it could be the other way around that um, satisfaction is leading to an equitable relationship rather than equity causing satisfaction so we can't establish cause and effect equally um, equity is not um, equally affected in men and women so women tend to perceive themselves as more um, benefited and left over benefited in relationships compared to men so we've got gender bias going on equally it doesn't apply to all cultures um, so research has found that US students tend to prefer equity whereas European students tend to prefer equality so we've got that beta bias who so we try to apply it to all cultures and as we said about testability, we can't establish cause and effect. But equally, Clarks argues that relationships, couples don't tend to think in terms of reward and equity. So it doesn't necessarily explain everyday relationships. And it it's just a theory. It, it, it's not something that would have validity in the real world. So in terms of our 16 markers, then you might get outline and evaluate the equity theory of relationships, or equally, you might get outline and evaluate one or more theories of the maintenance of romantic relationships. So with this 16 marker, you could either do equity theory for 16 marks, or you could do another theory alongside it. So you could do two theories in less, less depth. But obviously, if you were to just do one, you'd have to go into more depth about equity theory so your your AO1 assumptions about the idea that it's about fairness um, and if a relationship is deemed to be unfair either over benefited or under benefited then at least to inequity and feelings of distress and um, then that leads to dissatisfaction then we can talk about the idea about how we try to resolve those issues of dissatisfaction and inequity and how uh, couples try to make sure that their relationships are equitable because we feel more comfortable in that situation. In terms of AO3 then, you would have three to four evaluation points. So you could have your supporting evidence, talking about various supporting research. However, you could bring in that counter argument of testability that we can't establish cause and effect. So you're showing the examiner that, yes, there is supporting evidence, but you are aware that there will be flaws with that supporting evidence. So it can't be just taken solely that this is the correct theory of how relationships are maintained.